I am Narendra. In the last video, I have discussed qualitatively about the formation of energy bands in solid crystals. In this video, we will try to learn about the concept of allowed and forbidden energy bands in solid crystals by considering quantum mechanics and Schrodinger wave equation. Let us consider a one-dimensional single crystal lattice. You know, the most of the semiconductors are in crystalline form where the atoms are arranged in a periodic way along the direction R, let us say direction R. So each atom has potential that varies inversely proportional to the R. So the potential varies inversely proportional to the R. Since the atoms are arranged in a periodic way, their potential also varies in a periodic way. In a periodic way. So the electron in this potential, if suppose if the energy of the electron is less than the potential, that means the electron is bound to the atom. If the energy of electron is greater than the potential, that means that is away from the potential. So the motion of electron within this potential is mainly governed by the loss of quantum mechanics. So we need to uh, solve the Schrodinger equations for this system. You know the single electron system like hydrogen atom, the Schrodinger equation H psi equals to E psi, H is the Hamiltonian, it can be operate Hamiltonian operator, it can be written as like this, plus V, V is a kinetic energy, so or potential. So here you can write it a kinetic energy or you can write it as a potential. So and E is the energy. So if you solve, you can easily solve this Schrodinger equations for this uh, uh, single electron system that gives the energy eigenvalues. But if the system with uh, many number of electron, it is very difficult or complicated to solve this Schrodinger equation. Chronic and Penny, they introduced a model to simplify, simplify the solutions for the Schrodinger equation, where uh, the model mainly considers the potential as a periodic potential well. This chronic Penny model mainly considers the periodic one-dimensional square well potentials. So this is a potential and this is a function of R. So let us take this origin and this is a A. The region 0 to A, this region, the potential is 0. 0 less than or less than or equals to A, so potential is 0. So the Schrodinger wave equation is like this, del square psi plus 2m e by h squared square psi equals to 0. So this you can write it as so this you can write it alpha equal alpha square equals to 2m e by h cut square so this written as del square psi plus alpha square psi equals to 0 in this region 0 minus b 0 minus b less than or less than 0 in this region this is v naught this is 0 v equals to v naught so the Schrodinger wave equation is like this 2m e minus v naught by h cut square psi equals to 0. So this you can write it as beta square equals to 2m e minus v naught by h cut square. So this you can write it as del square psi plus beta square psi equals to 0. So these are the two equations we need to solve. So let us consider a block theorem. Block theorem. Block theorem mainly states that since the potential varies periodically, the probability of finding an electron is also varies periodically. 
the probability of finding electron means mod psi square that varies periodically that means the wave function varies periodically the block theorem mainly states that mainly describes the wave function psi of r is a product of a plane wave multiplied by periodic function periodic self function so this is a periodic function that means this is also in periodic right a plus b suppose this is the periodicity is a plus b in this square well potential so this periodic function gives the periodic self function so this can be defined like this so this is a wave function so we need to know the laws of uh, uh, quantum mechanics for this wave function you know the uh, psi of r the derivative of psi of r can be defined as a momentum and the double derivative of this wave function can be defined as a energy okay so if the from the quantum mechanics law uh, this psi of x psi of r and the derivative of psi of r must be continuous if these are not continuous the momentum and energy can be infinite so, so the physical ideally it's not possible so the wave function and the derivative wave of wave function must be continuous so these are the mainly boundary conditions boundary conditions so if you introduce this uh, wave function and substitute this follow this boundary conditions in these two equations in these two equations we can get the solutions for this Schrodinger wave equation so uh, I'm not calculating all the equations I'm not uh, writing all the equations I will go uh, at the end of the equation so that will give the equation minus alpha square plus beta square to alpha b so this is the equation in terms of alpha and beta sin beta b plus cos alpha a cos beta b equals to cos k a plus b okay so here uh, let us uh, consider b tends to zero that means so this is a potential is a b right so this b tends to the width of this uh, potential become tends to zero and v naught tends to infinite so this v naught tends to infinite that means there is an infinite barrier where the electron wave function cannot be penetrated at the boundary that means the product of v naught and b can be finite finite if you substitute uh, this uh, alpha and beta values and consider this uh, uh, b tends to zero and v naught tends to infinity you will get uh, uh, the simplified solution a simplified equation like this m v naught b a by h cut square sine alpha a by alpha a plus cos alpha a equals to cos k a so this is the left side is a function of alpha a and the right side is a cos k a that means the f alpha a is bound to the cos k a but the, the values are within plus or minus one so the function must be bound to plus or minus one so if you plot this function f of alpha a as a function of alpha a this is a combination of sine a and cos a 
and this is a this is a term okay so this gives the function uh, like this so this is the f of alpha a as a function of alpha a so but this uh, function must be bound to plus or minus one that means these are values or must be within plus one and minus one so this gives the energy eigenvalues and one more thing we need to know that so if uh, v naught is zero that means for the for a free particle if you take a free particle the v naught equals to zero that means if you substitute the v naught equals to zero this term is zero that means cos alpha a equals to cos k a that means that gives alpha equals to k alpha you know to 2 m e by h squared square k that means e it will give h squared square k square by 2 m h squared k is the momentum of a free particle that means p square by 2 m okay if you plot this e as a function of k k is a wave vector so this gives the parabolic function okay so as you can see k or p that means energy eigenvalues are in parabolic nature as you can see clearly here so if if you plot this alpha a as a function of k alpha uh, f of alpha a is a function of alpha a that gives that the sine and alpha terms will come here okay so but that those are bound to the plus or minus one so here if you plot energy of a particle or electron as a function of k if you plot so since the uh, wave function varies periodically the energy eigenvalues are also varies in periodic so this gives see, these are bound to the plus or minus one so that means this gives the allowed and forbidden energy bands so this is the allowed energy bands these are the allowed energy bands and this is the forbidden gap forbidden gap between the allowed energy bands so this is the this is these are all in a periodic zone and the k here you can see there, there is a uh, brilliant zone it's the first brilliant zone pi by a minus pi by a so this is the second brilliant zone 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a so if you plot it like this e versus k in a first brilliant zone So this is in a first brilliant zone pi by a minus pi by a this is the first brilliant zone in an extended zone you can plot it like this so this is the first brilliant zone and this is the second brilliant zone this is e pi by a minus pi by a this is 2 pi by a minus 2 pi by a in this way these are the allowed energy bands these are the forbidden gaps 
so in this way the uh, energy bands allowed and forbidden uh, energy bands are formed in this single crystalline materials so this mainly uh, discuss the more rigorously about the formation of energy bands in the solid crystals i hope uh, you understand the uh, about the formation of energy bands in the solid crystals so this is very crucial for understanding the uh, semiconductor based devices so next time we will see with the other discussion on the semiconductors To see more videos like this and please consider subscribing.